good morning and happy Sunday to you. So I am driving to Penn State Hershey Medical Center right now, leaving for work early because today is the COVID test for my upcoming surgery. So yeah, excited. Not excited to get this test, but getting excited for the surgery. Three days, three more days. done that burned oh my did that burn i tell you what this is my third covid test all four pre-surgical things never because i felt sick and they don't get any easier the only easier part of it was when i got my first one done right before my emergency surgery it took them 30 seconds. They left that swab way up in there for 30 seconds. These last two, it's only 15. It's 15 minutes of hell, but at least it's only 15. All right, so I guess it's time for me to go to work. I'll talk to you soon. So yeah, day before surgery. Seems a little backwards, 4.30 in the morning and I'm not drinking hot tea. Instead, I'm drinking one of these. But I have to start my whole clean out process in several hours. So I thought before I do that, I was gonna get up early and get myself some really good nutrients in one last time before I starve the next two days. Because um, obviously today I'm gonna be on a Clear liquid diet starting at 8 a.m. Um, and taking my stuff that I have to take. And I'm on clear liquids then through surgery, which I won't know my time until probably after 2 o'clock today. They will call and let me know what time to report. So today, a couple things I need to accomplish. Um, I need to have all the laundry caught up for Michael. I'm going to clean um, just some light cleaning because honestly, again, because I do stuff every day, I don't have a lot to do. I just vacuumed again the other day. So I think the only thing I really have to do is I'll, um, give the bathroom a good cleaning again. And, um, I want to dust the bedroom. Um, the bedroom gets, for some reason, the bedroom just gets dusty pretty quick where the rest of the house doesn't. Um, I need to empty my dishwasher. I'm gonna make him a nice dinner tonight. I wanna wash the sheets on the bed. So I have some things I wanna get done. It's kinda of like prepping for vacation. Stuff you wanna get done before you go on vacation because I'm not gonna be here for a week. It's like I'm gonna be on vacation and I have to pack. Um, again, since this is scheduled, I get the privilege, I guess you could say, of being able to um, make sure I have some of my comforts from home at the hospital with me. Um, so my own toiletries and books and um i'm not sure if they have wi-fi i would assume the hospital would have wi-fi that um, i may take the computer in i don't know i think i had the ipad in there before but i honestly can't remember anyway um take stuff to keep me occupied take some books in and there was something else. Oh, Mike said about taking my ear pods in because of the noise at night. That maybe I could put, you know, ocean sounds or something in to try to sleep. And drown out the noise. So yeah, I want to pack. So yeah, first though, drink my yumminess. And of course, do my normal gratitude journal and reading this morning. And then we'll get started. Well... It's time to begin, 8 a.m., my two tablets, yay me. Hi, so it's like 2.30 now. So I have most of my work done. My three loads of laundry are finished. I cleaned upstairs other than vacuuming. I do want to vacuum upstairs yet. So you saw I took my two Dulcolex at 8 o'clock, and then at noon I had to start drinking my solution. That is not going well. Um, I'm just to the point where 
it's the it's the, the what's coming out of me is the liquid that's going in which i'm using the orange clementine flavored body armor and it's literally coming right out like the same color <laughs> as soon as i drink it within like five minutes it's coming out it's not even staying in the bag anymore because it's too liquid um, if that makes any sense. So, so now I have a towel on my stomach under my clothes because it just comes right out of the bag. It's, it's, this is a mess. It's just a mess. And then I also walked in here in the living room with one of the glasses. I had to drink eight, eight ounce glasses. I walked in here in the living room, went to put the glass down in the cup holder of the chair and my hand was wet and I dropped it. So then I splashed eight ounces of this stuff. It went all over my double recliner, in the console, on my remotes. It's not been a good afternoon. <laughs> so, I'm done. I quit. I'm not drinking anymore. I have probably had another 8-ounce glass to go. I'm like, I can't. I can't. There's, there, I'm cleaned out, honestly. If it's coming out of me just like it's going in, my intestinal tract is perfectly clean for them to, for tomorrow. So I did receive my call from the hospital. I'm to report to the hospital at, sorry, sorry, hold on, let me. I'm to report to the hospital at noon, no, 10. My surgery is scheduled for noon. It will last approximately four hours. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna get up here shortly, go do my vacuuming. I did get everything packed for tomorrow. Other than a couple of my cosmetics that I'll pack tomorrow after I use them again. I have to make dinner for Mike yet tonight, and then I'm calling it a night. I just got to keep myself hydrated the rest of the night. But honestly, it's uh, to the point where I don't even want to drink anything. Because again, it's coming out as fast as I'm putting it in. <laughs> oh, this sucks. I can't wait for this to be over. <clears throat> Good morning and happy Wednesday. Surgery day is finally here. So it's still very early. It's quarter after four. And the only reason I am up this early is because, of course, it was a rough night in bed. Um, woke up about quarter four. This bag had just leaked fluid all over me. It's all over the bed, and I just washed my sheets yesterday. So I have another mess to clean up yet this morning. Rewash my bottom sheet and wash my mattress pad. I'm waiting till Mike gets up. He's still sleeping and I don't want to disturb him. Uh, I just don't think these clean outs for people with a normal GI tract should be the same as people with a non-normal GI tract. It just isn't the same. I've done cleanouts before for colonoscopies and procedures in the past when my belly was normal. And it, it, this is doable, but when you have a bag on you, it just, it's not the same. That's, it's too much of that stuff. It, it just makes, yeah. Or these, these bag systems aren't meant to accommodate something so liquidy. So like pure fluid. I know, TMI, I'm so sorry. But you know what? I'm going to be able to look back on this years down the road and see the torture I went through. So right now I'm going to attempt a cup of hot tea. See how long that stays in me? Probably won't. So I can have my tea this morning. I just can't put any milk in it, which is, it's fine. I can drink it without milk. So I still need to stay hydrated. I'm starving. My scale is down four pounds overnight. Um... So there's, there can't be anything left in there at this point. And right before I leave, they said I am supposed to drink a 16 ounce portion of Gatorade or apple juice. Again, what is with the high sugar drinks? And this like Gatorade's nothing but artificial colors and dyes in there. Well, I don't understand it. I'm gonna drink a 16 ounce bottle of coconut water. Um, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I do get it. Medicine is big business. People, th these big pharma and big medicine like to keep us unhealthy. They do. They don't want us well. So I'm going to go into a hospital and eat food that is like 
no health benefits. Like, it'll be crappy food, and I just don't understand it. Yes, I do understand it, but that's my biggest anxiety this morning is food that I'm going to be given after this surgery, that I'm going to refuse a lot of it. I'm just not doing it. Um, but that's my biggest anxiety. I have no fear of surgeries. I've been through how many now? Um, no fear of needles, no fear of anything except I want to heal as quickly as possible and I need proper fuel for my body to heal and I'm going to be deprived of good, nourishing, organic, proper food the whole time I'm in there. But I will get through this. I will. All right, stand by. Surgery day and I'm still in the kitchen. So I made up something for Mike to take along to the hospital to eat because, again, we all know hospital food is disgusting and not healthy. So I made a traditional tuna salad. So just a can of um, healthy, well-caught tuna with some avocado oil mayonnaise, seasonings that he likes, some frozen peas, and then I boiled some red lentil penne pasta and mix it all together. So it's like a combination tuna slash pasta salad. So that's gonna be his dinner along with some other um, protein bars and protein shakes and stuff to keep him fueled up while he's waiting on me all day. Still cooking. Cheeseburger omelet for my man this morning. Boy, I wish I could eat that. Mm-hmm. All right. It's soon, it's soon showtime. I'm all hooked up, ready to go. Next is the epidural, and then off I go. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, I'm in recovery. So everything went fabulous. Um, nothing major to report at this point. My epidural did work this time. Forgive the hoarseness. The tube in the throat always causes issues with my throat. Um, but everything went great. I'm on multiple pain meds. Um, Dilaudid in the IV. Fentanyl in the IV. Dilaudid push button. I'm still experiencing pain, but it's down to around the three, so manageable. No ileostomy needed, so no more bag on the belly. So I will keep you posted as things progress. Like I said, we're still in um, recovery. Uh, they have a room for me, but it's getting cleaned right now. So that's what we're waiting on. Honey's here with me. So, just hanging out. <laughs> hey, I'm in my room. Finally. 25 after 10. I got in here like right before 10 o'clock. So, surgery went great. Um, yeah, just awesome. So, I think I already told you that I'm on a catheter. I have a wound back. Um, that's the wound vac is in the hole that's in my belly so that tissue actually has to grow back on its end that's not stitched shut it's kind of weird looking they have a binder on my belly to kind of squeeze everything together everything looks good so now it's just time to rest my epidural is working um, overall i'm feeling really good like I've never come out of a surgery before and felt this good. Um, and I know it's due to being in the best shape possible going into this. So I'm going to say good night for Wednesday night and I will update you in the morning. Good morning, 4.30. I've just been dozing on and off, no real solid sleep. Um, just had my vitals done again and um, another bag of fluid. I feel like I'm very swelled from all the fluid, which I probably am. And I'm 
definitely hoarse from the throat tube. Um, but I'm very impressed with the epidural, knowing what I went through after my surgery in November. This epidural has been a lifesaver, um, controlling the internal pain. So yeah, still doing good. Um, no complaints, talk to Mike. Poor guy only had about four hours sleep, but he's pushing it through. He went to work this morning. He's only gonna work, I think, till noon or one. And then he's coming up here to be with me. So I will, I will keep in touch, see if there's any new developments. But as of right now, nothing. I'm just, you know, I got one IV over here. Got another one. Oh, I'm blocking the camera. Got another one over here. Only two this time instead of three. Um, just got a fresh cup of ice chips and just got my blankets fluffed up because I had them a mess. I'm wearing the compression things on my legs that keep squeezing to mimic, you know, walking so that um, I'm, yeah, you know what they're for. And then I did get a shot of heparin in my thigh in the middle of the night, which is normal, again, because I'm not allowed out of bed yet. Um, I must stay playing. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm getting to enjoy a sunrise this morning. There's some dirty rained on windows. Hi, so it's still day one. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet. I'm still uh, just hanging here. What else am I gonna do, right? Um, they tried to get me to walk this afternoon. That didn't go well. I, uh, the epidural has my right side kind of numb yet. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because I need to be able to walk to heal. I need to be able to walk to get my bowels moving and I can't walk, so I'm hoping this doesn't put me behind. Um, so they cut back on the epidural, on the amount of drugs in the epidural, but that's gonna cause me to feel more pain then. So um, they did that probably, I wanna say about two hours ago, they started cutting back on the drugs in the epidural. Um, and I'm starting to feel some feeling again in my right leg. Uh, like I had to use a walker to get to the chair and it's not that I can't feel my right leg completely. I just can't like pick it up. Like it doesn't respond. Like look at your leg and tell it to pick it up and it'll come up. But I look at mine and say, you know, pick it up and it's not going anywhere. Um, so like I said, I'm starting to get a little bit of feeling back in it. I am so exhausted from not sleeping. I can't even think straight. Um, so I just finished lunch. Guys, this food's killing me. They gave me a chicken breast and white rice and chicken gravy. I picked at it. They send one of these boost drinks. Let me read you the ingredients. Water, glucose syrup, milk protein concentrate, sugar, vegetable oil, and then a bunch of chemicals, carrageenan. Unbelievable. Pudding. I'm on a low residue diet, so I can't have anything that's good for me and has fiber in it. Well, of course, we all know pudding, yellow number six, yellow number five, artificial flavors, disodium phosphate, sodium steroid lactylate, palm oil, modified cornstarch, sugar, like, I need to eat, but I don't want to eat this shit. <laughs> so 
So, and I didn't get to pick this meal, this just came. Um, I did get to pick my meals though for dinner tonight and for breakfast, lunch, and dinner tomorrow. So tonight I'm getting fish and green beans. And I think I picked applesauce and the applesauce is unsweetened. Um, and tomorrow I'm getting eggs and the uh, girl from food service that was in to do my menu with me, uh, they just got a new company here for their eggs and their eggs, eggs, their eggs are free range eggs. So that's a good thing. So hopefully the next few meals, um, they'll be much better for me. I just need to be able to keep them in because my vegetable broth that I had for breakfast came right back out 30 minutes later. Not quite sure why. It was like, I was feeling fine, but then instant nausea, give me something to throw up in and out it came. And then as soon as I get it out of me, I'm fine. Um, and the, the doctor is saying it's, you know, the amount of what, first of all, what I had done inside of me has everything just so upset. And then with all the drugs that I'm on, it doesn't help. So, and I'm getting Tylenol too, besides the Dilaudid. So, my body's wrecked again. But, you know, I, I'm still feeling better than what I did six months ago. So, I'm not gonna complain. It's, it's, I've been through hell again, but I'm still better than what I used to be. My husband, my husband is on his way in. He should be here probably in the next 15, 20 minutes um, so that I'll have him to hang out with me the rest of the night. My caregiver. When he has to take me to pee, we gotta deal with all this shit. I just get in your way. Oh, I'm telling you, this ain't easy, is it? Why don't you hang on to the walker? Stay. There's a phone gonna catch your fall. <laughs> don't pick on me. Okay, hook me back up, plug me in. You gotta go back there first. I'll, I'll plug it in. Oh, mercy sakes. After you get in bed. Aye, aye, aye. Looking kind of sexy, ain't I? Sure are, George. George, George Washington. My little walker. Dang. All right, end of day two. So it's Thursday night, back quarter after nine. Mike went home, sorry, I was scratching my arm. Mike went home. Um, I have no more IVs. They took the, the all that was in the IV was the, um, fluid that they give me. But I'm drinking water and peeing on my own now. The catheter is gone. So that's a good thing. Um, I still have the epidural in. I need to keep that in for another day or two. So that's the only line that is going into my body. And the epidural fluid also has the Dilaudid in it. And then um, I have my wound vac yet, which that will stay on till the day I leave the hospital. Sucking all the residual fluid and stuff out of the old stoma as it attempts to heal. So yeah, my pain is manageable. Um, right now I'm not pushing the button for additional Dilaudid. I'm relying on Tylenol um, and I'm, I'm feeling pain. Um, but again, I live with pain and it's not horrendous, it's tolerable. I don't want to rely on the heavy drugs to be pain free because I know the, the damage it does to your gut health. So, cannot wait to get home and eat some good food. Oh, the food is killing me. But I was told their eggs have, um, did I tell you this? I can't remember when I talked to you, what I'm telling you about. Um, the eggs here are free range. They got a new company supplying the eggs here for the hospital and they're free range chickens. So my eggs for breakfast tomorrow are gonna be free range eggs with some cottage cheese and I think an English muffin. So yeah, looking forward to breakfast. I had a piece of Pollock tonight and some green beans and some unsweetened applesauce. So I'm eating, um, I'm finding some food, but they try to give you like pudding and jello and all this crap that's loaded with chemicals and I'm just not eating it. And I'm sticking with water. Um, they keep giving me bottles of Gatorade and 
Gatorade is just nasty. It, it's, it has artificial dyes in it and all these chemicals. And again, just not willing to do it. I'll stick with my water. So, and I brought my own stevia from home so that when I have my hot tea tomorrow for breakfast, I got my own stevia because all they're offering is sugar or artificial sweetener and I won't eat that either. So I think I'm going to sign off. Um, I only slept about three hours last night, so I want to get a better night's sleep tonight. So I'm soon going to say goodnight to myself and go to sleep. So I will see you in the morning. All right, good morning and happy Friday. It's the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, so things are progressing nicely. I'd show you my um, belly, but they have a belly binder on me now to kind of hold everything in place. So um, I'm a lot of stitches again, lots of stitches. And my ostomy hole is a big hole. It's a crater and that was not closed up. It's stitched on the inside, but I will be coming home with a dressing and that has to kind of like grow tissue again and heal on its own, which is why the recovery takes so long. Um, you know, once my bowels are moving, I'm up and running, but it's this ostomy hole that takes the six to eight weeks to heal. And I'm still on an epidural, still have the catheter sticking out of my back. Um, I tried to get them to take that out of me and they won't do it until I have my first bowel movement post-surgery, which I'm starting to gurgle. I'm starting to gurgle, it's getting there. Um, and I'm eating solid foods and yeah, everything is going great. Um, it's it's all been because I had myself, I know, in tip-top shape before I came in here. This is, oh, Lord have mercy. We're not pointing things. Um, it's all because I had myself in good shape before I came in here that things are going so well now. So uh, Mike's going to only work a half a day today, and then he's going to come up here and give me a bath, a sponge bath, because I can't get this crater wet yet. <laughs> Um, so he's gonna give me a sponge bath tonight and change my gown out. I can't put my own jammies on, unfortunately, because of the catheter in my back. Um, but I'm off my other IVs. They're still in me, but there's nothing attached at this point. They're just kind of dangling, just in case they would need to use an IV for something else, they let them in there till you leave at this point. So my only active catheter is the one that, again, is sticking out of my spine at the moment. So, that's the news on the home front here. Stand by, I'll report more. Here's my bather. Give me my sponge bath, I'm all clean now. Kinda grossed him out. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> he had to look at staples and a hole in my belly and I think he's gonna see me a little differently now, aren't you? I am not a Raggedy Ann doll. Wow. He's so mean. Hi. 4.30 Saturday morning. <laughs> you lose track of days in here. 4.30 Saturday morning, I thought he passed a little gas, a little, not a lot, but it was some, so yeah, we are going in the right direction. So between passing blood and passing gas, things are going out the way they're supposed to go out. Um, so still not where I need to be to be able to get out of here. Um, and I'm starting to feel more pain. I think as inflammation is going down inside of me and swelling's going down from all the trauma in there, that things are starting to move more and I'm starting to feel more pain. I haven't been using my push button Dilaudid. Um, when they changed the bag out yesterday at three, I think I've pushed it at the most three times and this is now 13 hours later. So, and I'm good for every 20 minutes to push that. So yeah, again, I'm not a junkie. I don't want to use the stuff. Um, so I'm trying, trying not to use it. So yeah, I'm, out in the hall every two hours. Even the nurses are starting to make fun of me. They can tell I'm on a mission because I was out at 2.15, I was out at 4.15. <laughs> like, yeah, I want out of here. The quicker I move, the quicker I leave. So, nothing on the agenda for today, obviously, except more hall walking and trying to find stuff that I can eat. This food is so nasty. 
Mike will be coming up eventually. He's not coming up early. He has some work he wants to do. He has to go to my mom's to do some stuff. Um, so he'll be coming up to see me later this afternoon and staying with me through the evening. He fell asleep here in the chair last night. This one chair we have in here extends back like a recliner and he's just drained and not getting much sleep. Um, and he just was out last night. So I left him sleep for about an hour before I woke him up and told him he needs to go home. So he needed it, but it was just nice. It's just nice having him here since I can't have any other visitors, you know, even if he sleeps on me, it's still nice having that extra body here. So, all right, I'll check back in. Saturday Memorial Day weekend in the hospital. I'm kicking this butt, by the way. Get them cards. I'm scores so far. Don't cheat. I don't cheat. I don't cheat. I'm watching you. <gasps> Mike. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, Memorial Day. Yes, as you can see, I'm still locked up. My body is being rebellious against me. It's starting to anger me. I am completely ready to go home. Like, um, I've had nurses and other staff tell me I don't look like I need to be in here. Why am I still here? Well, I'm still here because I still have not produced anything. There's been no bowel movement and they will not let me home until that happens. Um, there's been gas, but it wasn't until I had to make a scene in the hospital with the doctors. If you follow me on Facebook, you would have saw yesterday's post from Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. It was just a mess in here. I was getting to the point where I couldn't eat this food much longer. Like I wasn't eating it. I was sending 70% of the food delivered to me for my meals. I was sending it right back to the kitchen. I refused to eat it. It was junk. It was garbage. Um, it's almost a joke now, the food. Now I know this hospital did switch food vendors only a week ago, and apparently they are receiving nothing but negative feedback that it's pretty bad. So I came in at a bad time. But I told the doctors, I'm like, this food is not fit for a dog. The food that they're feeding me will constipate anybody with a healthy gut and you're trying to get me to give you a bowel movement on constipation foods. And then they took my caffeine away from me. I'm like, why would you do that? Well, that was the food vendor's choice. They don't wanna carry caffeinated beverages anymore because they think they're unhealthy. Well, caffeine is a natural bowel stimulant. I drink one cup a day, that's it. That's all I do at home, that's all I've been doing in here. Um, and then they take my caffeine. I'm like, oh no, this is not gonna work for me. So my doctors have cleared my husband to bring in all my own food from home. A few exceptions. Like the food service girl that came in to take my orders here in the hospital couldn't even get exceptions for me. Like the computer would not allow her to override anything. Um, so as long as I promise not to consume raw vegetables and raw fruit, I'm eating whatever I want. So yesterday Mike brought me um, some cooked yellow and green beans and some lentil pasta. Um, I did eat a few little cherry tomato halves and they said that was okay. Uh, what else was in there? Parmesan cheese and some olive oil and red wine vinegar. And like, it was a healthy meal. I ate yogurt, low sugar, low sugar yogurt with some ancient green granola in it. The doctors are fine with me doing this. Anything to get me to be able to eliminate something. As soon as I do that, I'm out of here. Um, and, and, and they agree I'm doing everything right. I just, my body's just not ready. I do tend to hang on to inflammation internally for a long time after any surgery. And that's probably where the issue lies. Like I'm still inflamed and stuff's just not able to pass through yet. I'm again, getting gas, but not huge amounts. So, 
Oh, excuse me. My funny story from yesterday. This is a teaching hospital. It is affiliated with Penn State University. So when a doctor comes in, it's not just a doctor, it's a whole team. So I have my colorectal team. I have my acute pain management team. I am on the acute care floor. Um, and then I have my actual surgeon and his staff. So again, when someone comes knocking, it's not just a person, it's like five individuals. Well, I am that self-sufficient in here that I give myself baths, I shave my legs, I wash my hair. I even write my own urine output and the time I did it on the board for the nurses. They don't even have to come in and look in the little hat in the toilet and measure and write it down anymore. I do it all for them. Like, I'm now a joke. They call me Miss America in the hallways because I'm out here with my hair washed and my own jammies on and I'm just, I'm buzzing these halls. Mike measured our steps yesterday on one of my typical walks and then we calculated, you know, how many times a day I do these walks, which is literally every two hours, sometimes every hour, depending on my level of boredom and my pain. I'm getting over 10,000 steps a day in, in a hospital after major abdominal surgery. Like, I'm doing amazing. So yesterday, I'm standing in here and I thought, I, I just need to take some time for me because I just got done ranting to the doctors about the food and then they okayed me to let my husband bring it in and the nurse comes in around the same time and takes my blood pressure my blood pressure's up and my blood pressure's been perfect, my sugars have been perfect, like it's been perfect as far as my health goes in here until I got on my little rampage. And the nurse is like, oh, what's going on? I said, well, I just kind of went off on the doctors. Give me a couple minutes and come back. Right after she walks out of the room, food service comes in and brings me my breakfast, which consisted of two pieces of white toast and decaf tea. This was after a dinner last night that consisted of four pieces of white bread with other stuff in it, but like this is the shit they are feeding people. In 12 hours, I was delivered six pieces of white bread. like. I, and I lost my shit again on the food service girl. I apologized to everybody because I knew, I knew I wasn't yelling at them. They just needed to hear my feedback. So then here come that poor nurse again. After I just went off on the food service girl, she takes my blood pressure again and it's even higher. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm done. I want everybody on my room. I want some towels, some washcloths. I need to take care of me for a little bit. Go away. And they did. Um, so I'm standing in here and my legs need shaved. I mean, I haven't shaved my legs since Tuesday. Yesterday was Sunday, they needed shaved. Like my palm tree tattoo on my leg was starting to look like it had real thatched palm fronds. It needed to be shaved. So I have my food tray with like basins of hot soapy water on it. And I have a spare chair sitting there and I'm washing and I, at this point still had a shirt on, but I'm naked from the waist down shaving my legs. And I have my foot, my right foot's propped up on a chair. And there I am just hanging out in all my glory. In comes the colorectal team. They, and my door was closed, but you can't lock these doors, obviously. And they push the door open and are knocking at the same time. And there I am. Fully just exposed and showing the world everything. They looked at me with like giant eyeballs and I'm like, they, they backed out so quick and I yelled. I'm like, oh no, you're going to come in here and we're going to do this now because I ain't having you come back. Let's just get this over with. So I put my leg down at least, but there I stood naked from the waist down talking to a whole team of doctors like it was completely normal. I don't even think they knew what to do with me at this point. My cousin said I probably have a sign on my door that says enter at your own risk. I probably do. But that was my funny story from yesterday. So needless to say, after I did all that, I sat down and sat on my bed and did some quiet time and looked up kind of a, a meditation video, just more for relaxing me. And then I started watching some funny videos on YouTube and then the nurse come back in and she took my blood pressure and it's back to normal.
So yesterday again was a rough day in here. But I'm feeling fabulous. Like I don't look like I need to be in a hospital. But again, until my body decides to wake up, I'm stuck here. So my poor husband is home making food for me again today. I'm like, you need to bring tweezers up because it's now been so long since I plucked my eyebrows. I'm looking so ratchet. I can hardly stand it right now. So I'm still here. I'll get this video up eventually when I actually get home. But yeah, still hanging. That's all I got to report. I'm looking great. I'm feeling great. I'm not even taking heavy pain meds. Like this is unheard of. Um, I did take Dilaudid overnight to try to get some sleep to hold down the pain enough. I noticed one thing. When my epidural, I had my epidural removed yesterday. And when that finally wore off and the pain hit me, it hit me hard. And my speed in the hallways dropped. I can't go as fast as I used to. Um, pain wears you down. And when the pain is intense, it is so taxing on the body. It just affects every area of your body. So <clears throat> I'm seeing it as a setback, but the nurses are like, no, it's not a setback. You, you removed an epidural, this is normal. And I'm like, I know this, but to me, it's like, it still registers up here as a setback because I don't feel as good. But um, I know I'm doing, I know I'm doing great. Um, it's currently 8.20 in the morning. I was due for a dose of Dilaudid at 5 a.m. My pain level's out of five. I can tolerate a five. Um, they keep trying to give me some because they worry about things like, that I don't consider. They worry about things like, you let your pain get too bad, then it's sometimes so much harder to get, uh, get it under control again. Or you let it get too bad, then it affects your blood pressure. Um, so I get it and you let your blood pressure spike, well then it puts me in a stroke risk and, and I understand that, but I also know my body. If, I'm, if my pain gets up to a seven or eight, I'll take the drugs, but I can still function as a five. I'm not a puss. I don't think that it's even feasible to think that what, after what I've been through, my pain should be at a zero. And I'm not gonna keep myself drugged up to do that. I'm just not. Even on the Dilaudid. <coughs> oh, oh, that hurts the belly. Even on the Dilaudid, it never brings the pain to a zero because I just don't respond to these meds. So, the most I ever get down is a two or, th two or three anyway. So, I'm gonna try to deal with breathing through it and walking through it and just pushing myself. All I need, all I need is one bowel movement and I can bust out of here. This is like waiting for the birth of a baby. It really is. Like I had an epidural, I'm trying to breathe through the pain and we're waiting for something to dilate. I literally feel like I'm in here to give birth. My husband, God love him, is amazing. But he's also, this is cracking him up because he thinks we ought to name my first bowel movement. Like seriously, because he's like having a baby. So that's all I have to report at the moment. I'm back. Hi, I'm home. So it is currently Tuesday, June 1st. I got home last night, Monday, May 31st, Memorial Day at around eight o'clock. I'm keeping an eye on my water here, hold on. Um, so I don't think I filmed in the hospital my last day in there. The last day and a half were actually the roughest days being in there because Sunday is when they took my catheter out of the spine, which stopped all my um, numbing meds and my narcotics that were going directly into my back. So after about three hours when that wore off, pain hit with a vengeance. My walking that I was doing in the halls went to about 25% of what I was doing. Like I was literally doing 10,000 steps in the hospital because I felt that good, but numbing meds and pain meds will, will do that to you. Like the nurse, my one of my favorite nurses, she remarked the last day, she's like, 
you probably were walking a little fast considering what you've been through. She's like, we saw you in the hallway and we looked at you like you were power walking. Like they nicknamed me Miss America in there because I always had my cute little jammies on and was out doing my thing. But I felt good until they turned those meds off. Then it hit. Monday, you know, the doctors are like, you don't look like you should be in here. You look like you need to be at home. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go home, but still nothing coming from the bowels. And they don't like to intervene. You know, they want the body to wake up on its own. So they said, well, you have a touch of bowel paralysis. We're gonna push it along a little bit. So they gave me a shot of milk of magnesia, hoping that maybe in an hour it would push something through. No, nope. seven hours went by, <laughs> nothing was pushed through. Now I'm wearing this belly binder and it keeps my whole insides, insides so tucked in and squeezed together, which is a good thing. Um, but I thought, is it push, putting too much squeezing and pressure in there that my bowels can't move? So late yesterday afternoon, I thought I'm gonna take this off for a little bit just to let my body relax. And I thought maybe that was some of my problem too. Like I was so stressed out about not being able to go that I was just too on edge, too stressed, too wound too tight. So I'm like, okay, I need everybody out of my room again. Let me alone. I let, told my nurses, I'm like, do my vitals and then just let me alone for a few hours. I just want to try to just relax. So I took this belly binder off and laid down and um, still nothing was happening. And then the nurse did come back in. She's like, the doctor wants to try another shot of milk and magnesia. I'm like, All right, let's give it a whirl. Well, within an hour of that shot and having this belly binder off, it worked, but the pain in my belly was, I don't have any words, like near tears. I hurt so bad. The, the, the bowel movement itself, no pain, no nothing. It was normal. Um, it was my belly and the incision and the, the hole, this gaping crater of a hole that I have. I was a little worried about how bad it hurt. I'm like, and I had stopped all drugs at that point. I'm like, I don't want anything but some Tylenol. Just, that's all I need. I just want to go home. I'll take care of myself. I called my nurse back in. I'm like, please, let's turn the drugs back on. And she wanted me to anyway. She's like, are you sure you don't want some more? She's like, you don't know what the first bowel movement's going to be like, you know? I'm like, no, I just want to do this on my own. I'm not trying to be a hero. I just, I want my body to do this naturally. And again, I've told you before that the narcotics can constipate you. And I didn't want to be fighting that. But it got to the point where I had to, I had to have Dilaudid to at least make it through the evening till I went out the door. And the doctor promised me, he said, as soon as you give me something in that toilet, you're out of here. As soon as I did, I yelled for the nurse in the hallway. She called the doctor. They come in, they unattached my vacuum from my hole, took the IVs out and I was out the door. Like it was that simple and that quick. So now that I'm home, I'm feeling good. I actually slept last night. Um, I'm still, still battling pain. So I am taking a low dose of Dilaudid, not my normal dose. I'm just kind of trying to take that little bit of an edge off with a low dose just to make it manageable. But I'm up and functioning this morning. Most people would be just be laying around recovering, but I'm having pain regardless if I'm laying still or moving. So I'm just going to keep moving. So I made us breakfast and did the dishes and, um, straightened up around here, put stuff away that Mike just didn't have in the right place, which I didn't expect him to, but you know how I am. My stuff has to be in its home. So I did that and now we're getting ready to go to the grocery store. I know I can't walk a grocery store, so I will be in a motorized chair, um, but I want to feel normal and I want to get out and I like to pick up my own groceries. And so we're going to head to um, Whole Foods and probably Target in Lancaster and then I'm going to come home and I'm going to relax then um, he had he had he had done some cooking while I was in the hospital so he has leftovers for dinner and I'm probably just going to have a protein shake um, I can't overload my belly and I just can't believe how good I feel considering what I just went through less than a week ago so the whole 
hole is this big, gaping, open, like, like somebody took a hole saw and just cut a hole out of me. It's probably at least an inch deep. So now what I have to do is I have to uh, pack it and clean it every day. And it will take weeks for it to fill in with new tissue growth. So that's going to be the next obstacle. Because again, it's just an ick factor. Um, but other than that, staples look fabulous. They come out on June 11th. All my appointments are already set up. So June 11th, my staples come out. June 29th is my follow-up with my surgeon, hopefully being able to obtain a back-to-work date. He's looking at six to eight weeks off. My lifting re uh, restrictions are actually longer than what they were from when I got the colostomy surgery. You know, I was under lifting restrictions for three to four weeks. Couldn't lift more than 10 pounds. I have lifting restrictions for six to eight weeks. Again, just because I have this gaping hole. My abdominal walls are just severed and the hernia will happen just like that if I'm not careful. So again, Michelle has to behave, which I can, I can behave. So I think I'm gonna finally end this video here that's taken place over the course of a week um, and I will get this uploaded and I will be back to my regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, thank you. See you soon. Bye.